YouTube, it's Tone. I'm back with another one for you. And this one here today is a continuation of the Court Survival Guide. This is the, uh, the second video of that. I think there's like 50 something pages in this. So we should be able to get this done this week. I'm gonna try to run this shit out this week, little by little. Um, Cause it just makes it easier for me to time the slides and all that shit when making the video. So I'm trying to make it, you know, even though this shit is choppy and raw, it's still, I still, you know, there's still a sequence to it and that shit's annoying sometimes when, when the video gets too, too long. <clears throat> anyway, let's get into this shit here. So you have the right to legal counsel uh, for your defense per Sixth Amendment, pursuant Sixth Amendment. Uh, you have the right to conduct your defense pro per persona that's in your proper person that's uh opposite of pro se right so uh free from the professional restrictions imposed upon licensed attorneys right <clears throat> you gotta understand that these people are on your land you know what i'm saying they're in a leased building uh with the, that were granted the privilege to operate their business on your land so you know um you are the government essentially is what is what the thing is and so you don't have to play the game based upon the rules that they try to impose on you as if you're somehow obligated to follow those fucking rules. You're not. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So you play the game however you want. Your character enters the, the uh, venue uh, with, the, with the chosen gifts that you, that you choose them to have, whatever they are, right? So if you look at it like that, I'm trying to put it in the context of a game for you to understand because that's exactly what this shit is. <clears throat> so you have the right to submit motions you have the right to a fair trial you have the right to change your plea at any time before trial and that's a big thing too is that you can always back out the thing is that so if you do then you got to start the fuck back over from the beginning so you can do an affidavit of rescission on your signature initially that got you uh into the contract to have to be obligated to them to uh, begin with you can uh do an affidavit of rescission on your signature but then at that point you know these people can just bring the charge back up um, and start back over essentially is what it is, right? It doesn't make the charge disappear, but it, but it'll make your contract to enter into the venue in that particular position where you can just back out and change it again if you want to. <clears throat> so you have the right to appeal any judicial decision naturally, right? Because he's not the end all be all. He's just basically the judge is sitting there as a mediator while you and the judge, while you and the prosecutor go back and forth about some shit that they had nothing to fucking do with. And that's the crazy shit is that who the fuck is the judge and the prosecutor when they're not even the um, complainants. They're not even the ones who, who got the ball rolling on this particular case. Where the fuck is the actual victim at through this whole process? Why is it just you arguing with two people, three or four people, or even five people that had nothing to do with the damn case. They're all, they're all hearsay uh, third party representatives for somebody that they don't even know. And so that's what it is. So you have the right to appeal any judicial, <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? So you have the right to a speedy and fair trial by impartial jury, Sixth Amendment. You have the right to waive court and transcript costs and the uh, on the basis of pleading in former paupores, uh, which is no money. So you can file as indigent. So indigency will allow you to go ahead and file um, any of your documentation for free because you you are supposed to have access to to the courts for free, and they do charge a fee because they do need money to operate. But I think they they fucking exorbitant fees to be honest with you, and and it's done on purpose so that way you don't try to uh, use any of their of their services without having to literally give them your fucking right arm. <clears throat> so you have the right to due process of law trial. Before you are deprived of any liberty, property, or money, Fifth Amendment, right? So they, that means that they're not even, so according to due process, they're not even supposed to fucking tow your car off the side of the road, um, arrest you, any of that shit without due process of law, um, which would mean that you had an opportunity to have a trial. So it, so when they arrest you and stupid shit like that, initially, beforehand, what's what's really going on is that they're treating you as guilty until proven innocent, which is a complete violation of their fucking, of their due process uh, duties and obligations. So you have the right to face the injured party claiming damages, Article 3 and 6 Amendment, and that's a fact. 
And the biggest thing with this, you have the right to face the injured party claiming the, claiming the damages, right? And there has to be an injured party for there to be a fucking technical crime. Otherwise, it's just civil in nature and know that. And they'll dress it up as a criminal charge. So you have the right to face the injured party claiming the damages. And the biggest thing about this is so when you look at your charges, right? And you see the state of versus XYZ. Who the fuck is the state? Who is the state, bro? It's you, okay? So it's you against you is what the fuck's happening. They're pretending to be fucking administrators for the state, which is really you. It's the people, right? And so if you ever were to ask the state, the state of, whatever the fuck they claim to be, if you ask the state of to stand up and put his hand up and state his name for the record and swear under the penalty of perjury that he swears to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, right? Could he do that? Could the state stand up and put his hand up and swear on the Bible, whatever the fuck book you guys want to use over here, whatever spell book you want to use, right? Uh, can the state put his hand up and state his name for the fucking record? <laughs> of course not. Cut the shit. So you have the right to face your accuser and witnesses against you, the Sixth Amendment, and that's another one. So you want to see the state, all right? The state's making all these claims. Uh, they're claiming I have damages. They're claiming that you owe them something. You don't even know them. So just for shits and giggles, why don't we just go ahead and have the state stand up and put his hand up and state his name for the record. Cut that shit out. So you have the right to inform the jury of the truth, their rights and duty. <laughs> I mean, I just sit in there yapping to the fucking jury, a bunch of brainwashed people who have no clue about law, and you're going to sit there and try to tell them what they're supposed to be doing? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's going to, that's shit. Imagine how that goes. So you have the right to put the judge on notice of your intent to preserve your rights, which you should absolutely do. I mean, I went, <laughs> I went ahead and did, you know, I sent a pretty fuck. you know, it was a, it was an ignorant letter, but these people get pretty fucking ridiculous. Uh, they act like they're fucking broke. It's crazy. The way that they be fucking harassing people to try to get into their trust. They act, oh, because they are broke. Oh, because they are broke. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. So you have the right to put the judge on notice of your intent to appeal any ruling or decision during the case. <clears throat> you have the right to protest and object if, if any of your rights or demands are not being met. You have the right to demand the court place in evidence any unrevealed contract, statute, law, rule, or information being used against you per Sixth Amendment. That's why you ask them for the cause and nature of the actions being taken against your um, strawman. So you have the right to challenge all relevant law in this trial in terms of their intent, interpretation, fairness, enforcement, and whether they serve and protect the people of your state. You have the right to personal liberty under the 13th Amendment. You have the right to challenge the jurisdiction of this court. You have the right to argument of recourse and remedy under UCC 1-103 and 1-1203. Right. And so they do have to grant you remedy. They can't just it's not a dictatorship. That's not where the fuck we live. If they want to live there, then they can play in their house by their fucking self. You know what I'm saying? But that's not the games that we that we play here in fucking America. It doesn't work like that. So argument of recourse and remedy, they can't present you an issue or charge you with something of which there is no remedy. OK, so there has to be a remedy either either under uh, common law or you're going to find it in equity. But you're going to find it. So you have the right to demand that the code be construed in harmony with the common law. And that's a fact, right? You got these people. And, you know, I already told you the reason why these people are able to write these fucking corny ass laws that are obviously repugnant to the fucking Constitution is because that shit doesn't apply to you. So they're making rules for the people that work for them so they can make them look like whatever the fuck that they want them to look like. That shit has nothing to do with you. That's why they're able to write them shits. Make sure that you let them know that that shit has nothing to fucking do with you. Because it doesn't. Because it doesn't. And on top of that, if these motherfuckers are out here setting all these firearm regulations and all this shit. When really it only applies to their, to their fucking companies, right? We're talking about ATF, FBI, fucking police force. All you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers is out here setting all these firearm um, regulations and all that shit. That only applies to you, but why is it only really applying to the people that it doesn't apply to? Why are you only fucking with the people who have nothing to do with that fucking nonsense? And meanwhile, you guys are over here overriding your own rules that you made for your own fucking people. So you guys have illegal weapons on you. You guys have fucking magazines that are over the fucking limit that you set for yourself. So think about that. Are your fucking weapons fucking regulated and are they, are, are they up to code? Absolutely not, bro. Absolutely not.
So think about the rules that you're making for your for your fucking self before somebody comes and starts taxing you people for that shit. Because you're gonna, because I mean, you can get fined for all that shit too. You think that? Come on, you're not gonna be held liable for violating your own rules. Of course you are. So think about that next time you make some some corny ass rules. <clears throat> so you have the right. What we got here? You have the right to require translation of any citation of law or procedure into plain English. And that's the thing. So these people are using a whole other language. They're using legalese and just presenting this bullshit to you as if and knowing that you're going to understand it as something else because you use a, di a different dictionary than they do. Right. And you can see there are a lot of details and procedure to learn. So if you are not planning to take this to the to. <laughs> to take on this level of preparation, or if you simply want to minimize your exposure to the court system, then we would suggest using the strategy mentioned herein that stand on the Sixth Amendment and blacks uh, and backs the judge into a corner. And for whatever portions of this guide you find useful, uh, you would do well to learn those areas of choice, frontwards and backwards, so that you cannot be outmaneuvered, right? And so that's the thing. You learn the rules to the game, bro. They, you know, they only have certain rules that they can make. You know what I'm saying? So if you look at it like a chessboard, these people are only allot allotted certain actions to be able to take, whether it's diagonal, horizontal, or whatever. Look at it like that. So you know the moves that they can make, so you're going to get yourself ready for those fucking moves because they can't move outside of those boxes. You know what I'm saying? And if they do, you're going to catch them and penalize them for that shit. So here are a few psychological tips. You are Mr. Nice Guy, always polite, diplomatic, and courteous. You know, and I try my best. You know what I'm I try my best. So if you lose your temper or clean language, you lose the case. You are a very smart sheep going into wolf territory. And they, you know, these people ain't even really wolves. A lot of them are morons to be 100% honest with you. They just they just do what they're fucking told. That's it. Cuz they need pawns that are that are going to be sitting on the bench, bro. Those people do not got that type of power. You kidding me? They they need those people cuz they cuz they're expendable just like everybody else and there is a high there's a high possibility that somebody will catch them doing some dumb shit and throw them the fuck out of it like it really is like that. So, you know, you can say anything you want in court under the first amendment, but the more you say, the more you risk. Better to ask questions and whenever a judge hears something from you that blatantly <laughs> challenges or threatens his or her position as a judge, you risk the contempt of court. It's true. So you can put some dumb shit in the form of a question to make them answer their own fucking question. If it's a stupid, because they got a lot of stupid questions. You know what I'm saying? Rhetorical nonsense, fucking bullshit, trick questions and shit to try to get you into some corny ass contracts. So the judge and prosecutor are working together against you. You will see uh, how they cover each other's butt. The judge is supposed to just be a referee. Sometimes you can cast the prosecutor coaching the judge along and trying to control the judge's fi uh, final answer, which I've seen personally. I've seen them stop and ask the prosecutor if that's some shit that they can even do. What the fuck do you mean, nigga? Aren't you supposed to be the referee? What the fuck are you asking the goddamn people? <laughs> Come on. So I've seen this shit personally, so, that's, so this shit is true. So... Whenever the judge or prosecutor is overly polite to you, it means that they want something uh, from you very much. Beware, they're probably wanting you to agree or to say something that gives away more of your rights. Uh, a dead giveaway is when the prosecutor proposes a motion and speaks very fast so that you cannot understand it. And look, you always want to see everything in writing. I tell these people, last time I dealt with them, I haven't dealt with these, with these fucking people in years, actually. Uh, well, I mean the court system anyway. I've dealt with the police and all that shit, even with a supposed warrant and all that. You know, I did my fucking do not detain paperwork and all that. And obviously this shit worked. Because I supposedly had a warrant. They ran my shit and I didn't get arrested. So, you know, I haven't gotten arrested for no for no dumb shit in years. I had like a little domestic shit that I had a few years ago that I got arrested for. But that but the paperwork doesn't stop that. If you injure somebody physically, then they do have to fucking arrest you. But I haven't gotten arrested for no little stupid dumb shit like I always used to since I put in the paperwork. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, in situations where I know they fucking wanted to and if they could have they would have <laughs> if they could have they would have you know what I'm saying so the shit works the paperwork works man do not detain hit me up if you need that email so uh, the judge will always try to make you believe that you only have the option that he or she is presenting to you do not trust for one millisecond that the judge is telling the truth or quoting the real law you know better 
And they can say whatever the fuck they want, really. Because if you ask them to quote to you which law or, you know, code, statute, or whatever they want to call that shit, where are they getting this bullshit from? They really can't fucking show you anything. And then if they do show you show it to you in a book, get them to show you how that shit even applies to you physically. You know, the NSA gets away with the dumb shit that they do because they cause what they tell the courts is that none of their uh, codes of statutes reference them specifically so they're not obligated to entertain them shits. Well, if that's true for them, it's fucking true for you too. So they have to literally put your fucking name in the goddamn statue and send it to you. They're not, they're not doing that. So they're trying to pull everybody together into these certain groups and make them all obligated to certain nonsense. You see? The stupid ass games. So the judge and prosecutor both know that although the hearings are taped, only the transcribed written record is admissible as evidence in a later hearing. You can suspect uh, they will try to get you to believe something or communicate some lie or manipulation that will not appear on the written, written transcript. Oh, they are just so clever. Right? Keep that in mind. Always bring a transcriber with you. More than likely, you're going to win every time. If you go and you start spitting this type of game to them, bring a transcriber with you and you will win. You will win. So the judges, and you know, this is shit that you don't hear about because what the fuck are they going to say about it? Do you do you, do you you go bragging about it every time you got fucking knocked out? No, absolutely not. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Absolutely not. So they don't want to talk about it either. So the judges conditioned to hear grossly distorted versions of reality from opposing viewpoints from the attorney's liars, who in turn expect the judge to rule in their favor by making their attorney appear to be a bigger liar. Uh, good cop, bad cop. So exaggerations, false premises, and false conclusions are the primary tool of the prosecutor, and they will both interrupt you while you are talking. Learn to object immediately and limit their abuse. So... I can talk over people too. You know, I got real good at blocking people out. When you have kids and shit, they can just, they'll be screaming all day. I don't even hear you. I don't even hear you. So if the judge determines you to be fighting loudmouth patriotic radical with a bone to pick, he or she will probably make up th make things more difficult for you. You will not be allowed to make very, uh, very many, if any, constitutional claims or arguments. See, and that's, so this is the thing too. So when you go, you know, you do all your paperwork and, uh, and you, and you show up. Uh, you show up with your with your fee schedule and your invoices and all that shit too. So you're gonna have a counterclaim anyway. Well, that's what I would do anyway. You know, it wouldn't just be a conversation about the dumb shit that they want to talk about. We could talk about where the fuck's my money at too. You know what I'm saying? So know the psychology. If you let the prosecutor walk all over you, the judge will assume that you don't know very much. They will both take advantage of any weakness that you show. 11. The judge will be watching and listening to you to see how much you know about your rights and the law. To, this tells him just how much they can get away with in court. The less they think you know, the more that they that they will let their uh, the more that they will let their guard down, and the more fraud they will attempt to perpetuate. The judge and prosecutor are very slick in this in this technique. They will both be playing according to what they think you know. If you impress them as being very knowledgeable as your own defense counsel, they will tend to be very careful not to expose themselves on the record. That's why you got to make sure everything's on the record. So they've been pulling this stuff for, uh, off for over 150 years in their refined and corrupted system. I would be more than happy to go ahead and file this bullshit with the IRS Criminal Investigations Department. Uh, definitely get the EIN and all that shit because these motherfuckers are straight scam artists, to be 100% real with you. So the judge and prosecutor must, by definition, violate the law <clears throat> in order to win the game. And they do. So they do it all the time. And they're good at it. And they are fucking good at it. I, you know, I'll keep it a buck. You guys are fucking great at that shit. But fuck you anyway. So, but they seldom run up against people, people with your knowledge of the truth. And there is always a way to expose the violations as they are happening. Uh, the trick is to do so without being charged with contempt of court, which is heavy fines, which is fine. Because if they want to send you the fucking bills, you know, they don't have to hold you permanent, you know, uh, physically fucking as charity for this shit. Look, if you want to find me, go ahead. And you can 1099, I mean, you can oh, you can discount that, do an OID on the fine too and fuck around and get paid on it. Like, if you want to get crazy, it's like everything that they give you is really an offer. You can just take that, deposit that shit right into your fucking... So when you become a private banker, you can just take it. The shits are all commercial. Every bill, you know, every everything that they send you from the court is going to have a fucking barcode on it. It's going to have some type of commercial, commercial symbol on it, which means that you can go ahead and claim it. So it's really an offer. So that's going to fall under the rules of UCC and things like that. So you can go ahead, you can fucking accept their offer. You can, um, you can give them a counter offer. You can do whatever you want to it. So the judge is very good at avoiding questions when you put him or her on the spot. 
so you must be even better at steering the judge with your questions into a corner. The judge will try to convince you that you are in some regional court of statutory jurisdiction or other such nonsense. This is entirely false. In this case, the court is operating under the color of law, i.e. phony, because it is uh, using another name for its obvious admiralty military jurisdiction. Just look at the gold fringe on the flag. That's a big thing to keep in mind is that whenever you walk into a courtroom, look around. That shit is this all hidden signs. You know, I fuck around with the numbers and shit. You think, you think I'm new to anything hidden? Esoteric? Come on. Everything is hidden and everything is placed how it is placed in the courtroom for a reason. They literally are telling you everything because they fucking have to. So they're telling you encoded messages. So to try to to try to uh, act like they're still <laughs> in, in in the in the in the in the purview of what they're of how the games are supposed to be being played and shit. And you know maybe they are, maybe they're not. Who knows? So it is also fraudulent because it is operating outside of its geographical venue defined as the 10 mile square region of the District of Columbia. The only three legal jurisdictions allowed by the Constitution are summarized below with their respective basic properties. Common, equity, admiralty. Those are your three uh, jurisdictions. So type of penalties, uh, criminal, civil, uh, civil, and civil, and civil and criminal. <clears throat> so basis of law, God, constitution, contract, inst uh, international contract. Compliance with law, life, liberty, pursuit, uh, compelled performance, compelled performance. Required proof of crime, injured party, violated contract, uh, violated international contract. So these are the different types of um, situations that you'd have to end up in in order to qualify to be under different um, jurisdictions and shit like that. So essentially, if you're under common law, shit like that, uh, and then it, it even blends into equity. So you're in common law equity, so there has to be an injured party, and then you start to blend into equity. So you could also have injured them and they took a loss or injury via, um, you know, equity or something like that, which then they could try to blend it into, into equity and shit too. Um, so colorable means phony, bogus, and not genuine. Chances are if your court hasn't yet converted over to Article 3 common law yet, as per sealed executive orders from the U.S. Attorney General, then it is fraudulently operating as a statutory court of commerce with international jurisdiction. By holding the court to a legal jurisdiction, you will automatically expose their fraud. So, and yeah, and so by making them, essentially by making them voice what their stance is and what the venue is, so what the... Uh, what do you call it? What the what, what the cause and nature of the charges are? That's gonna bring you into what the venue is, uh, and by making them stand on it, then you know what your fucking defense needs to be, so you can deal with that shit accordingly. But until then, you're operating off assumptions, and so the fuck aren't they? And it's just a retarded ass game. So winning the game, you win the game by getting the judge or jury, if it is, if it gets that far, to dismiss or throw the case out. There is enough truth and strategy herein to hang them with your first appearance but based on your level of skill preparation and or personal goals you know that's ultimately going to dictate the final um turnout right so how much work are you willing to put into this shit because it does take time to learn this shit you're not gonna just learn it overnight and there's nothing i'm gonna fucking tell you that's gonna make you confident enough to go in there and fucking yap away because you, you're not gonna talk yourself out of this shit court is the paperwork it ain't about what the fuck you go in there and say you know <clears throat> so right here so you may need to go all the way to appeal in order to win that's why you got to keep really good records so some masochist patriots are eating this stuff up and just uh, eating this stuff up just to get to the full courtroom experience all alternately if you are the prosecutor going after some public official you win the game by getting the judge or jury to find the accused guilty as charged this is much harder uh, and this is why there are Title 42 classes available <clears throat> so that people can learn the procedure that the courts do not want anyone else to know about. Thirdly, for a traffic or tax case against you, the judge and prosecutor wins by the uh, judge or jury ruling that you have indeed done something wrong, guilty as charged. So, and that's what's going to allow them to lean your, lean your estate and draw from it the same way that you can do too. So... So anyway, defensive techniques. Once you have decided how to proceed with your strategy, you will be faced with having to adapt and make adjustments as you go in order to make your plan succeed. Uh, how to use your knowledge, perception, and skills against the tyranny imposed by the judge and prosecutor will determine whether you win or lose. And there are as many adaptions for you as there are judges because of psychology. 
it will inevitably be a psychological contest between you and the judge and that's what it is and that's what it is but um you know and they're just good at their craft you know what I'm saying? They're fucking witches. They're fucking black magicians. They're good at the fucking bullshit that they do. They're good at hypnotizing and all that, setting up the courtroom a certain way. They have a certain field in there. It's a zero point field that they have that shit wired to in the courtroom. So that's why you can feel like you hear a fucking pin drop in that shit because it literally is a field in there. And they do it and they do it just to fuck with you, to hypnotize you. So here are more general factors and guidelines and preparations for playing your winning strategy. Make sure that you are in a court of record. Before you say anything else, just make sure the judge, if if the if the recorder is on, this will put them on notice that you mean business and that you will not be hoodwinked. If they ask you if you if you understand, say no. This is a surefire way to control the case and to employ the best strategy described here. Rain. If you answer yes, you are giving up your Sixth Amendment liberties. So just say no and use this opportunity to embarrass the judge into admitting more of the truth of the law and judicial uh, relating to your lack of understanding. So you don't have to understand. You can definitely comprehend. So make sure that you clarify that shit for the fucking record just so they don't try to be on no dumb shit. So admit nothing. Ask questions. Every question you answer in court digs you deeper and deeper into the jurisdiction hole. Your answer automatically gives your implied consent to the judge's jurisdiction and authority over you. That's why you keep asking them questions. And, and everything you say is already being used against you. They are trained just like the officer to get you to admit things that will incriminate you. So it is in your favor to admit nothing and keep asking questions. Uh, this way you will control where the discussion and evidence is going. Act dumb. Play smart. <laughs> so from the above game rules, you can easily see that it is your to your advantage to lull the judge into a comfortable position so that he or she will more likely expose and admit some mistake on the record. So one of the most powerful ways for you to play is to act dumb at first and then quietly go for the throat when they slip up, expose themselves, or find themselves stuck in a lie. Most of the examples in these details below are of this strategy. <clears throat> and it is, a, I mean, it really is a game of chess, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying that. You know, I say what it is because I see what it is. You know, I've been through the system a lot of fucking times, so... I already know the games and they're really good at what the fuck that they do. But, you know, when you start learning this shit, they fucking have nothing. Like, at all. Like, they're standing on a fucking literal house of cards and the smallest little breeze just blow their whole fucking house over. That's what the fuck these people are really like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't even understand where they even get the balls to act like they don't fucking know what's going on. Because it's so blatantly obvious. So anyway, five, smile, give thanks, apologize, and ask. Uh... This is one of the most successful strategies in the initial appearances consistent with number four above. It works because the judge will form a favorable opinion about your honesty, innocence, and sincerity, sincerity, and then grant your request without suspecting anything else. So, smile, give thanks, and apologize. <laughs> yeah, sometimes sorry don't cut it, but that would be fucking hilarious, though. So, bait, stare, and corner. This is the main tactic to use for manipulating the judge into dismissing the case. So the idea is to bait the court with questions concerning your confusion and then steer the judge into providing answers which force him or her to make a judicial determination or ruling which exposes his or her mistake or fraud. It's just like painting the judge into a corner from where there is no legal way out that allows them to continue their case against you. A classic concerning question to ask is, okay now, so just so I understand, you, you precisely... Uh, has your honor made a judicial determination on that question? You fill in the blank with the only option left. Something which clearly incriminates the judge examples below. So you're leaving them with a yes or no answer. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now, okay, now, just so I understand you precisely, has your honor made a judicial determination? So it's yes or no. You know what I mean? Because you're trying to force them into fucking making one instead of having this stupid ass conversation that they're going to try to have to go back and forth until you don't know what the fuck you're doing and they can bang the hammer and charge you. Like that's what the fuck they're trying to do. So just, you know, make them, just get to the fucking, because I don't like being around the bush either. I'm not going to sit here and have this fucking yap fest with you. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not interested in that shit. Or that I'll go talk to the wall. What the fuck am I here to, you know what I'm saying? So know your options. Pause whenever necessary. Always maintain your awareness with the help of your counselors of what your choices are. If you become confused, ask for clarification or time to consult with your counselors. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. If the state or prosecutor becomes uneasy in their haste to win, they will tend to make mistakes. So, and they are, and, and you know, and when it gets to the point where they know that they can't win, they're just going to fucking dismiss it. Honestly. 
on some dumb shit. So know your emotions. Emotion is a formal request to move the court into agreement or understanding on how to proceed. Know what your menu of options are uh, is at each state of your uh, each stage of your case. You may even opt to have a motions hearing in your case uh, if it's not dismissed right away. Go to a law library and look up motions in the reference manual and learn that each is for uh, learn what each one is for and when to use it. This will be your most challenging homework assignment. A few of the uh, a few of the more useful motions are motion to dismiss the case for any of many good reasons. Motion to declare mistrial because of obvious error in procedure, right? And they always the the fucking procedure is always botched. These people do not operate according to procedure because they they would, you know, not that they not that they're not bankrupt, but they would they would have went out of business a long time ago if they followed their own fucking procedure and they don't. So you can usually probably probably win it on that procedural uh, procedure errors. So moving uh, motion to prove jurisdiction dangerous and uncommon. So you know they do have jurisdiction and shit, but it does not obtain legally most of the time. To be honest with you, they trick people into the shit. So, um, you know, all the contracts initially are fraudulent, and which which invalidates them all anyway. If you if you if you really want to be real, they don't fucking disclose anything that has to do with the contracts. That's fraud. So, motion for discovery to produce all information against you. Motion to make evidence to place missing information in as evidence. Motion to recuse the judge for obvious bias or prejudice against you. I would recuse everyone that had that that um that got money from the fucking state. I would recuse every judge that came into the fucking courtroom that got paid from the same place as the prosecutor. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that. Come on. With that conflict of interest, bro. So motion to find the prosecutor in contempt for contemptible or rude behavior. Motion for fact finding to expose their fraud and their real legal issues. Motion for trial by jury of 12 to let the people decide and uh, decide upon the cause. So motion to subpoena witnesses to assist in your defense. Motion to refuse the jury for cause because of impartiality or ignorance. And I would, uh, yeah, you know, you can kick out all the fucking juries for real uh, for their ignorance. Uh, because if none of them are studied in law, then why the fuck would you want to have them there sitting there listening to your case anyway? Same thing with the judges. The fuck are you people even listening to when you don't even know the law? What the fuck are you even there for? For real. So that's what. It, so anyway, this is just some of the some of the things that you could use to get your foot in the door with this whole game and shit. Things that you need to know. Get your contracts in place. You need them just to have something to stand on. Email me with with any uh, inquiries. So it is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these clowns. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.